anyways, I've been following um, Steve Hardney since, and he's the co uh, founder and um, president of Keeping Current Matters. I don't know if many of you use it, or if you're not, go to keepingmatters.com. Uh, it's a great resource. It's a subscription-based model. It's very low cost, like 20 or $30 a month. Um, and it's, for me, a necessity because they come up every single month and every single quarter with amazing infographics. So I have to actually pop it up on my screen so I have it. And it basically shows the newest one that they just released yesterday shows what the uh, trend is potentially going to be. Actually, I just had it right here in front of my face. Um, for Goldman Sachs GDP forecast, as far as real estate is concerned. So quarter one this year was, thank you so much, are already down 6%. They're projecting, uh, projecting uh, the real estate market's gonna go down 24%, which is still not bad compared to if you look at the 2008 crisis and the bubble. Um, and then it's going to rebound. And a lot of people have been on both sides, you know, no matter, I joke around and say, I don't care if you're right wing, left wing, all I want to do is eat chicken wings. I try and be in the middle as far as what all the noise is, but it looks like our market is going to rebound. Some people say it's going to rebound as a U. Some people think it's going to be a V. And I am one of those you know, people that think we're going to, as far and as fast as this market is going to drop, no matter where you are in the world or the country, I think it's going to come back up. And I was right because they released this yesterday and they have been, they have like a 92% success rate as far as projections are concerned. Like they have the greatest minds that I know. It's funny, Tom Ferry, who I love and adore and have a personal relationship with him. He's just a great guy from many years of going to his events and everything else, he considers Steve Harney the visionary and messiah of real estate. So this we can actually share with people and give them hope because you might say, listen, you know, it's all about the art of framing. You can frame bad news to be good news and good news to be great news. So you can use this and say, listen, why don't we wa uh, wait out the storm and in the middle of quarter two, we put your home on the market and you can maybe have the strategic measures. I just listed four properties in the last 21 days and they are suffering on showings, but they're getting showings because so many people are taking the homes in our local market off the market. Over a thousand homes, I think, in the last 30 days have been uh, withdrawn status, meaning they're active under an agent, but they're not currently for sale to the public. So they're still locked down in our area, different states, different rules and regulations. State of Florida, as an agent, you can't go after a withdrawn listing. You can uh, try and talk to the agent and find out why it's withdrawn, but you can't go solicit that particular seller if it's withdrawn in the state of Florida. It's still considered an active listing under an active brokerage. It's not terminated or expired, where those you can go directly to seller and try and sol solicitate business from. Um, trying to think what else, uh, that's good want, stuff. Do you want me to share anything else or because no, I, I, that's awesome. I, I mean, we could sit on that for a second and talk about it, but also, you know, I think part of, of what we're all excited to, to focus on is just how you adapt at this moment in time and really focus on leveraging technology. Like we're actually using right now, right? We're leveraging zoom, um, and FaceTime and, bomb bomb and all these it's so important to create virtual experiences now right it's so important to adapt more than ever and focus on that being the lifeblood especially with people um you've never met before so uh, what what would your take be on that so right now i had a free account for zoom for ages probably two three years and i used it but didn't use it and now just like this mastermind group you know, and utilizing bomb bomb at a higher level using Calendly. Zoom is part of my, I've had four Zoom conversations in the last seven days. Um, and I'm treating them almost like virtual listing appointments. And they are because I'm screen sharing and I'm showing people what I do for marketing, how I do for marketing, my results, what the current market is. Um, Marcus, you mind if I share my screen? Please do, please do. Right. Yeah, full control. Here, 
I'm keeping a running total and I usually, <laughs> my desktop sometimes are very messy and now it's semi messy, but here's my screen. Okay, so I, I always like to listen to music. We'll exit that out. I always have a calculator open on my main screen. I have three screens set up and then I'm gonna move it over. So on the right, you're gonna see kind of like what my workflow was. And I left this zoom up here purposely because I wanted to try and show you. So this yeah, is a buyer consultation. Or not Zillow, MLS, map, single family homes. I said single family homes, if you look at the criteria, all Naples area, four to 600,000 single family homes active. So there's 724. Now, do you want a home with a pool or without a pool? You look a pool. Let's click on pool. I promised my kids a pool, so. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not gonna show you the whole thing, but you, I, with the Zoom technology, it's completely changing our business because we're forced to change. And I think that this is going to be a game changer. So here, I always, I like doing these market trends and I take the snapshot. This is part of my listing presentation. And over here, I just counted before we went live, nine. So I've been on nine listing appointments over the last two and a half months. And with that, you go there and show people pertinent information, but now instead of, you know, we're saving trees by not doing this, we're doing it in real time. And then we can move faster and we can give more information than just printing out a piece of paper, wasting color, ink, you know, product. But, you know, I, I wanna share something else. Um, with this, this has created the concept and want and need to support my local community. And somebody here can take this, and Marcus, I haven't shared this with you yet, but maybe everybody that's on this webinar wants to join and test it out. I created this, which is Florida Strong Small Business Showcase and Resident Resource. So I created my own Facebook group for the state of Florida. I didn't do it only for my area. And now I've only been doing it for two or three days. It's a brand new group. We have 150 people in it. I've only been spending an hour a day. Now I'm gonna spend two to three hours a day in growing this group. So my goal, for next Friday is to get 1,000 members in the group. My goal, where I think the scale is gonna be, is five to 10,000 active members. And how do you get, how do you grow a group? Well, you get a good core of friends or neighbors that know, like, and trust you. Ask them to join your group and ask them to uh, invite 10 to 20 people. Because they might invite 10 to 20 people, but only 30 or 40% of those people might actually join the group. But you might have a higher success right now because guess what? Everybody is bored as hell right now. <laughs> so, but you have to have a meaning. So I bought the domain, floridastronggroup.com. I created an email, info at Florida, $150 investment. And I own this domain for three years through GoDaddy. I have the email system set up for two years. But what is my whole game plan for this? It's called leverage. You want want to leverage your time because most of us are indoors and playing by the rules and you want to go out there and try and make a difference. Now, is this going to benefit me? Yes, potentially in some way, shape or form, it's going to benefit me. Have I totally thought about exactly how I'm going to monetize this? I'm still working through the business plan, but I know there's a want and need for this. So Friday at three o'clock is my first small business person locally in town that I'm going to interview. I have a waiting list of 13. So now I have to figure out and say, am I gonna reach out to these small business owners? How many interviews am I gonna do a week? I'm thinking maybe I start off with one a week for the first week or two, then go to two a week, and then every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, increase engagement by releasing content. So what I'm gonna do is use Zoom, interview a small business owner, try and get them brand awareness, try and get them. So you know when I ask five to six questions, it's gonna be simple. like. Why'd you start your business? How long have you been in business? Where are you located? Where can people find you online? Do you have any kind of cool discounts or promos? Like my first one coming up is a restaurant owner. And he's gonna talk about his awesome happy hour and they're doing curbside right now. So maybe he can generate business for people spending $45 to get a two course dinner and a bottle of wine shoved in their car out the back door of the restaurant. Like literally he's doing it out the back. He's creating a drive through through the alleyway in his parking lot. So this I think is gonna be good. And I try and keep everything positive. I created all the rules. I actually, part of the three questions is, drop your email below to be on the newsletter. 
I cannot believe, I don't even have a newsletter. I said to go on the newsletter, 62% of the people that signed up left their email. So I can utilize that for Facebook retargeting, email directly. Now, are there real estate agents going through? Yes, I basically said in the group and in the rules, no self-promotion unless you have permission. Anybody that does self-promotion without permission can be deleted, blocked, muted, and or uh, taken out of the group and banned. So I've already kind of made the lines of communication clear, but this is something that I think I, I'm gonna pursue and do. But now, next Wednesday, I'm creating a seller success series and I'm gonna utilize Zoom technology instead of doing it personally, in person at a, an a event center that I was gonna do, which was only $150. Ooh, I'm getting served breakfast. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be doing a CSV file for everybody on street text and dropping it in. I'm going to do a Facebook paid advertisement with a link to Eventbrite. Eventbrite is free. You got to think outside the box. The last two weeks, like I missed a, week, a meeting last Wednesday because I had a listing appointment, but that entire day, last Wednesday, when I wasn't here with you guys, I was doing all these graphics. I was busy, busy bee behind the scenes because if you don't stay busy, you're going to go crazy. And my biggest thing is be the person, be the leader that everybody's going to know and trust. And even Marcus, I showed Marcus right before this, starting about an hour ago, another street text lead is, is set, scheduled as an attorney to sell $600,000 home tomorrow at noon, Zoom. And I'm going to be going through, hey, this is what I do. I've already sold two homes in your community. Uh, because the thing is, we have to adapt. We're being forced to adapt. So the ones that can't, adapt and innovate are the ones that are going to dissipate. So just keep that in mind, everybody. That's brilliant. I mean, you're innovating for sure. And this is, this is a, an incredible time to do that and really focus on learning new technologies or integrating new technologies into your business. Things that maybe you felt a little apprehensive to do before. Um, now is the time to actually focus and learn them and just try them. Because I think all of us deep down aside are craving connection especially now in social isolation, we're feeling like we need it. And Zoom, I feel like it's connecting more people than ever right now. I'm seeing, you know, little small groups and reading clubs get together, girls that had their reading clubs now doing Zoom meetings, having their wine and enjoying each other's company and the proximity of Zoom in their own homes. Like the, the, the possibilities are endless for connection right now. And I think it's super important to, to think about, you know, for all of you that are, have, us as your coaches, we're already sh been showing you this for a long time. What, it, what is, happens when you connect in our calendar? What, is, what does it do? It usually it prompts you to ask, like we answer, we ask you a few questions, you answer them, you pick a time that you want to meet with us, and it sends you a Zoom meeting, right? It's the same thing that you would do for your clients, the same exact thing, or for your leads. So you're giving them the chance to virtually connect with you. And Bomb Bomb is a great way to actually set the tone with the automations to help them understand why they'd want to meet with you. But if you start incorporating all these technologies together, that's the experience in itself. And so you're always giving them those options and then you're using your Calendly to leverage Zoom, uh, uh, you know, along with BombBomb and all of a sudden you got this perfect recipe for what's going on right now to create more connection than ever. Anybody else want to actually expand on that? Or, I, I, wanna, no? I wanna share something here as well. I wanna share my screen. So. I saw a post by uh, Sean Morsfeldt. Uh, he's a real estate agent in Kelowna, BC. And I just thought it was such a great post for this time because you're basically, you're providing, what he did is he provided sort of a sense of encouragement to uh, home buyers and sellers by just showing how active the market is right now. Because I think some people assume that everything went on, on hold, especially if they're isolated themselves because the, you know, they can only kind of see what they see. But by providing these, these other posts, what you're doing is we're giving people a different insight. So I'm just going to share my screen real quick. Let's see. And then I'll play this video. Can you guys all see that? We can. Can you see this? Kelowna, SW Properties. Thought I'd say hello. So you got, you got good? Okay, perfect. Yeah, uh, good. Gorgeous sunny day. And uh, you know, people have, a few people said, oh, must be nice to have some time off. And I'm like, time off. 
no time off in this business. Matter of fact, in Ontario, they actually have uh, called real estate an essential service. And uh, I believe it. People's lives got to go on. And, you know, we, we provide shelter and people's, you know, we have to deal with people's situations and make them successful. So I'm out here, change of office venue. Actually, I kind of like this. <laughs> I'm in my, in my yard and uh, got my office here. As a matter of fact, I'm just inputting a brand new listing in 143 Summerhill. Should be com coming out today. Great listing in the in the 689 kind of range. Um, we put a deal together of the weekend um, with some dear clients. Just awesome. Um, we showed we had everything all covered off. Lysoled all the doors. Went in with gloves on it, et cetera, et cetera. And we put a deal on a, a condo out in Mission, in the kind of in the in the 400s. And so that's exciting. Reduced another listing. Um, and so, uh, and then these people, um, you know, other people we're working with, we just put a deal together on a house. And so, you know, we can adapt with, with uh, this situation. Um, we're fortunately really geared up to be online. And so, you know, we just say, you know what, you got to keep a positive attitude. You got to work hard. Don't take it as just time off, at least for us. And um, keep a great attitude and uh, serve people. And, uh, it's a great opportunity. Actually, I'm enjoying this weather and this sunshine and uh, at the same time to get some work done. So anyways, just thought I'd say hello and um, hope you guys are all well. And send me an email, sean at swproperties.ca or post on my wall. Tell me how you're doing. How are you coping with this, this new change? So I wanted to share that too because one of the things he did there is he showed how busy he is he showed how busy the market is, but he did it in such a sincere and caring way. And then at the end of it, oh, you got your Captain America shirt there, Marcus. Um, but at the end of it, what he did is he, he, he was really caring. He said, tell me how you're doing. Tell me how you guys are in this. And uh, I just think that that's such a good approach to do because it's sincere. It's great marketing. You're building your brand. Now is not necessarily the time to pick up the phone and be like, hey, are you ready to buy or sell? Now's the time to pick up the phone and say, hey, I care about you. How are you doing? Who's the 20 or 30 people every single day that's on top of your list that you need to be asking and talking to? Prioritize them and just reach out to them and just say, hey, I'm here. I'm, you know, I'm mobile. I'm a real estate agent. I can, I can drive. I can go places. Maybe some people are, are you know, they're, they're a little bit concerned about going out. Maybe they can't go to the stores. Hey, maybe you can just pick up some, some toilet paper for them. You know, this is a great opportunity but just keeping it positive and also share about what's going on in the marketplace. Show, like talk about the fact that, you know, X number of homes just sold. It's, I think that kind of positive mentality is infectious. I love the post that George shared. I saw it on, on Facebook uh, this morning and it was so good, but it's basically saying it's like all these cruise ships uh, out there, you know, they're fully stocked with staff. They're saying, Hey, you know what we can do? We can be mercy ships right now. Uh, you have NBA players who are who are actually out of their own pocket paying for the staff of the arena. You've got GM General Motors saying that, hey, you know what? We can we can completely stop our factories and make uh, make uh, you know defibrillators, these different uh, ventilation devices. I think that is so powerful because of the fact that well, number one, businesses are incredibly flexible, and number two, it's you know how can we serve people right now, and in doing so as we communicate and get that message out there, we're building our brand and we're building that reputation for the long run because people are going to remember, Hey, those are the businesses they care. Those are the people that, that stepped outside. These are the people that are really are, you know, it's not a time to sort of like stop working. Now's the time to work harder. Now's the time to, to get in front of this and create the culture and create the, um, the business that you aspire to, to see in the marketplace existing right now. So I, I love that George. Uh, and now I'm, I was a little bit late to attending this, so maybe you already shared it. Because George, you had a slide you were going to share that graph. Did you go over that already? He did. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. He did. Yeah. I mean, I think opening this up right now, guys, to to what your experience has been right now in these last few weeks. How have you adapted? What have you focused on? Um, anything that you've learned in this process about yourself, about your business? This would be an awesome time to discuss that. Don't be shy. This is the perfect time to unmute yourself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on you, Leon. How did I know that? Leon, you always have something good to share. That's what, uh, so here you go. I'm going to give you the better one. Because George's governor pissed off my governor, who's still mad about not getting any real traction for his presidential bid. 
Five o'clock today, we go on stay at home. It's not stay in shelter, but basically everything is that isn't shut down will be. If you're not essential services, then you're just done. And real estate is not on their list. Although, thank God, the financial institutes are. So I got a couple of deals closing next week. I guess that's a good thing. But, um, you know, we always have things that we never have time for as realtors and agents that um, need to be done. And my, my focus over the next two weeks of sitting home, trying not to grow dreads and, uh, you know, zombie beard or something. Um, I, I was looking through Facebook and... Um, one of the things I'm going to take the time to do next week, well, this week through the next two weeks, is sit down and go into Facebook and, and start working on the things I've been putting off because we always are putting things off. So um, I'm going to increase my video share up to, I guess I was looking the the statistics dynamic, three minute plus videos are, are what Facebook is giving you traction for. I'm going to go in and I haven't really been using Facebook stories or the Instagram stories or all that. So while I'm here doing nothing, I'll be moving that stuff over. Um, up to now, what I've been doing, I've been doing videos for um, my buyer clients. And, and one of the things I'm putting together that I'm gonna put in street text is a seller video um, that I'm gonna send out that shows how we're doing things different. Um, I'm gonna order some, uh, the automatic hand dispenser says, teasing somebody the other day about, oh, you, you walk in houses here now, I kid you not. Some people are providing gloves, but most times you've just got the little Purell bottle. So I laugh like I can walk in, hit the top and give myself the virus when I spread around because I touch the top of the plunger handle and voila. But I'm going to order some of the automated ones so that people come in and just put their hand underneath and make no contact. But one of, one of the things with the sellers is to explain to them about minimum things, they're worried about how much traffic comes to a house for people they don't know. And that, that's a very valid concern. And here where I'm at in Washington state, you know, we're up here, you know, trailing New Jersey and New York, and I'm not going to diminish how bad it is everywhere, but we basically, for where we're at dynamics of being an international port, international airport, traffic between Canada and here, um, all the traffic flowing from Canada to traffic, we have traffic. So our numbers are up on the coronavirus and, and we know the number is going to get worse. So what, what I'm encouraging also, and I talked to MLS and some of you might want to talk to your MLS. Um, we're not allowed to post on the public comment side about, you're not allowed to put any live links. So I'd asked them, well, can I sit there and actually just put the verbiage in there about a video for the video walkthrough? And they basically said no. So in the agent remarks, I am putting that we have virtual tours and videos and please call or text or whatever and get a link from us so that they can send that to their buyer clients to go ahead and let them see it. So if they're genuinely interested, they'll still wanna make the appointment to get in. And what that does is it for the, for the buyer agents, it'll give them engagement with their buyers because now it gives them something to give them. Um, on my side though, for marketing for the sellers, they're, they're knowing that the traffic will be minimized way down. And um, you know the, the fact that you're showing you care about them and their family because they have valid fears. So over the next two weeks, I've got like this morning, my, my call center was saying, we got to make we got some appointments. I'm like, yeah, two weeks down the road. But what I'll do in the meantime is same thing, Zoom, bomb, bomb, um, like that. And then I'm just increasing everything online. So for those that have to stay home and those that will probably get hit with, you need to stay home. My, my encouragement is, you know, I'm the free 99 guy. Go in there and increase your awareness online because, you know, you sit here and if you got time, post a video around the home, make it personal, make it something related to what they're doing. Um, make it funny. Don't make it just about real estate. Get an aha moment, get a laughing moment, something, because during this time, people do need something to laugh about. And when they see that side of you, it's like, oh my God, I had a guy I talked to last night. He's like, hey, Leon, see you in about two and a half weeks. That's like, no worries, man. And um, like George just said something about um, the statistics. We have something called infographs our MLS gives us. I use it. It's a live link that continually runs. It continually updates. I don't do a still shot. So um, send it out to your clients when they start asking about the markets, show them where it's at, tell them save that. They tell them track the progress, see where they're at. When the line goes down, tell them, hey, let, let, let's see how it goes up together. But it, this is the best time now where if you play that, we're in it together. You know, markets are always talking about relationships. And, and when people see that you're impacted too, you're affected too, you're a real person, you're going through this, um, you know, it, it'll, it'll give you a whole lot more to work with. That's on. Uh, that's that's right on. And and I think part of that is right now taking a step back and and not turning your ads off as much as actually changing the automations. Just like we changed the Julie SMS that you just learned about, change your email automation. 
focus on a message that connects to that person that really speaks to what they're all feeling at the moment and lets them know, hey, I am there for you. It may not be, we may not be able to get in your home, but we can connect virtually. We can connect through Zoom. Give them options just to connect and let them, that's the, that's the cue there. This is your opportunity to go in there and send videos and practice this connection model that we always teach. Try to have a, a friend request sent. Try to go through that, that motion of now is the time to actually work on things that you weren't working on before. So I would say now more than ever, be open to trying new things. Be open to the Zoom. Be open to the Calendly. Be open to the bomb bomb, And think about that as an experience that you want to provide to people you haven't met. And then, of course, the people that you already have in your database, leads that you haven't connected with. Now is the perfect time. They could be feeling like, whoa, what's, what's going to happen with the market? I need some reassurance, right? I need to, I need to, to figure out what's going to happen with my most precious asset. And then all the, the people that you already have as clients, they need some reassurance as well. People that you've done business with before. This is a time to connect more than ever. Yeah, I mean, if, if I could quickly add, I think that um, one of the most important things to keep in mind here is that you're going to have people who have more questions now than, than ever. I mean, there's going to definitely be people who have considered or are planning now on postponing their impending sale. Maybe they thought they were going to sell early in the spring or, or whatever it might be. That those, those plans may have changed. That, that's fine. Those things do change. But now more than ever, those same people have questions. And if they haven't already chosen a realtor, they haven't already begun dialogue with somebody, why not have some, a way to bring them in and, and, and let them know that you have some answers for them. And if you don't have answers, then figure out, figure out an angle. You, you better have an angle and the ability to put people's minds at ease and then the ability, once again, to just meet people in any way, shape or form. And we're kind of treating this as look at the most affected areas and try to set yourself up for something that would work there. Even if your area is not currently on lockdown, that's great. You have the ability to do some other things, but plan for what may happen. Start really considering and setting yourself up digitally. Um, we got some ad ideas that, that we can maybe share. If anybody else has any ideas that's working well for them, this is the opportunity obviously to share and let's start implementing you know, different verbiage and different things that once again, as we said last week too, they're not intended to scare people or add to the, the, the you know, fear mongering that's going out there, but as a way to keep ourselves going in business. Um, and once again, convince people, look, I understand if you're not ready to sell your home now, but you probably have questions now more than ever. There's ways for you to connect with me personally, but virtually, um, where I can answer any and all your real estate questions. If you're wondering how this may have affected your home value or whatever, I'm here to be able to answer those questions as best as I can. First place to do that is to meet with me. Once again, you don't want to meet with me in person. Here's a link, book with me through my Calendly. You can you know, set different widgets up on your Facebook business page. There's many different solutions. Um, and Leon, as you always say, free 99. There's a lot of free tools to connect with people virtually um, to make sure you have the ability to once again answer any and all of their questions. If they say, hey, we're, we're not going to be ready to sell right now during this time. Great. Not a problem. My job isn't to convince them to sell right now. Right? My job is to be there as a, as a valuable resource and answer, once again, any and all of their questions so that they, they grow to know, like, and trust me so that when this all passes and they're ready to list their home, why not come back to the person who's been so helpful over this time? One of, uh, that's that's one really other, good, yeah. One other thing to throw in there, you know, we, we sit there and even though in, in most cases, real estate is seasonal, whether people say it or not, we have our phases where we're at. And um, the calendar date you look at, I always joke and say, if you hadn't started on what you're doing in, back in October, you're behind already. But right now for seasonal wise, for where we're at, most of the thing, it blows through April, but everybody wants to start getting their house ready for when the kids get out of school. So if you don't have a target date or something to put in your mind, I would start looking what schools are. We have schools that are out for just till like the middle of next month. And we know this, but you're still going to have people that as summer comes about, they're going to turn around and be ready. So what'll, what'll happen out here, like I said, if we get two months of inventory out here, we do the happy dance. We usually stay around, um, you know, like seven weeks of inventory. So what, I, what I'm planning, what I'm looking at is the fact that we'll have an initial surge and it's not like we'll sell more homes to the year, but we'll have more homes to sell that'll hit the market at one time. So I would suggest that you start targeting a date that you know you want to get homes on the market. And that way, when you start going up to the sellers and your clients or even your buyers and you're looking at things, you're already gearing yourself up for that point. Because if you don't get yourself positioned and set yourself in place to do this, when the time comes, you'll miss the boat. And this year is going to be what I call a short season initially. So 
even like when George was saying the temporary off the markets, whatever, it's like, take the time, go on the MLS, look at the expires. We have something called temp off market. Ours, if they've got like 60 days, if it's not back on the market after that, they have to turn around and, and basically take and uh, make it expired. You get agents that won't do that because they don't want someone else to get the listing. So I, I always say this, go shop in places you haven't been shopping on the MLS, start positioning yourself. If you see something off the market, put a reminder to, to do your daily go look and see and use the opportunity, you know, like I said earlier, someone said, to make a bad opportunity a great opportunity because eventually it's gonna happen. I deal with a lot of military right now, all their TDYs, all their PCSs where they're changing stations, all that's delayed at least 60 days. So I expect the DOD, they'll, they'll either ramp it up further or they'll let it go. But I, I know I have dates in the time frame. So knowing that I have something to work with, the ability is to adapt to the new model of what you're doing because Moving forward from this year forward in real estate, we are into a new norm. And you know, the world is small, people don't realize that until they see something like this happen. What happens across the world somewhere definitely affects us here. So if you haven't changed your model or thought about something to do, now is the time to sit down and take a serious look at your business for what you do, who your mainstream clients are, and figure out the best way to make this work in a way that they're being serviced and, and at the end of the day, you're still getting the listings and you know, generating the business because those that don't do this, they'll be out of the business later this year. I expect a lot of realtors to tank this year because they don't have a plan. They have nothing in place and they're doing this business as usual. And there is no as usual anymore. Yeah, I, I really agree with that. And I was going to actually say something almost the same as you, um, which is essentially, essentially the spring market is getting pushed back. Right. And then it's in June, come June, come July, it's going to hit with a bang. And so it's just think of this as a long pause, but now is the time for us to be really, really just bringing in as many of the listings that you would have been listing right now, get them ready for June, July. But not only that, figure out every single person that you can talk to who is maybe considering listing with someone else. This is a huge opportunity to get in front of them. This is a huge opportunity to be like, no, I'm actually the realtor of choice here. This is me. This is the person I want to be working with. Like, um, this is the person you want to be working with. This is a tremendous opportunity. And everybody is still looking to buy and sell. They're just not going to do it this week necessarily. Some people have to. Some people have to. They don't have a choice. But, um, you know, they could be a you know, hundred different reasons why. It could be a state sale. It could be, you, you, you name it. Some people have to. But there's going to be a lot of people that are sort of waiting right now. And they're going to be waiting for June. And so I, yeah, Ira, actually, I, you, you were just speaking to someone recently and I, maybe you could share that too. Remind me of what I was speaking to somebody about. <laughs> you were talking to someone and he was saying that he was going to list or he was going to buy, but he was just going to, he's just on pause right now. Oh yeah. Like so I was talking to one of our, our clients here, like he is a realtor and he said, I was about to go and do some of transactions and he's like, but I just decided. He's like, I'm, it's not that I'm not doing it. He goes, I just hit pause on it for a little bit. So I think right now in this time, what people are looking for in terms of your automations is how could you lower people's anxiety levels by offering them something that could help them with something they could actually do other than scroll Facebook all day long, becoming fearful. Are you going to occupy a space in people's brains right now um, and be helpful to them? So that when they think of you, they think of you as somebody who's grounded, knowledgeable, and have some expertise about you. Now is the time to really step forth in your communities as someone who comes with an expert and professional level of wisdom. So that comes down to your automations. So what could you do practically right now to help people? You could ramp up your automation. So I went through and I was looking at Julie here at the office and I realized that our automations that are set up are not practical to right now and they could seem to be insensitive. So we went through and changed them all. I don't know if you've noticed, if you didn't change your customized automations, we went through and updated our system to change it so that Julie wasn't asking to come see someone's home right now. So we changed it to being like, in terms of like, what are your needs right now? And I'm sure that you are anxious right now. And this is, we're taking measures to help you do the things you need to know, do in this timing. There are people who got new jobs and need to move. 
there are people that are like in the military and they don't have it. They have to move. There's, there's things that have to happen right now. So if I'm one of those people and your automation ends in my inbox, is your automation speaking to my anxiety right now? Is it giving me something practical to do that I could feel peaceful about? So I was even looking at our 10 day email that's in our system and the 10 day email talks about, you know, if you're letting the 10 day one go out just as is, there's ways to change that one to be cognizant of the times right now. If you're looking for something to do, go in there and look at that 10 day email. Does it speak to our current circumstance and you being helpful to it? You could change the wording in that one to say, I'm sure you have a ton of questions right now. We all do. But the cool thing is, as a community, we have an opportunity to come together. Just know I'm here for you. So whatever your timing is, whether you're hitting pause on something or whether you're needing to do something right now and you have a lot of fear over how you do that, just give me a call. Click the link below and just get it and I'll help answer some of those questions and we can work through this together. You know, being, being that kind of peaceful person, people still have motivations to move. And I think now that we're locked in our houses, <laughs> like I have four kids at home. Me and my wife are realizing that we need a more functional space. Like we're losing our minds with our children. There's a lot of people who are reevaluating their current circumstances. One of two things, either they're deciding that I need to downgrade. Maybe some people are saying, I don't want to be over the max. I need to downgrade. I'm going to like, look how I can do that. Or other people are like, I need to get into a home that I want to be quarantined in. So how do you address all those people's questions now? Well, your automations could really speak to people's fears and anxieties right now and give them a sense of peace. And you can position yourself as somebody who's wise in your community so that when they're ready to go, you provided a sense of peace to them. So that no like and trust model has been increased. So just think about what could you do right now? Well, look at those automations. How could you change those automations to address people's fears right now? Yeah, Ira, that's incredible. I think another thing to acknowledge too is when we're all at home, we have time to do those little fixer uppers that would help market our house, whether it's a quick paint job. Some of you saw painting and were making fun of me for not having a gym on it, Logan and Troy. Um, but painting your home, small little things, landscaping, all these little things that you could help these homeowners who are considering selling their home, these small things they can do now to get the home market ready. Those are small, easy tips that you could provide with video and help say, hey, now it's the time where you're at home quarantined to do some of these small things. Declutter your house. Here's some, some, some tips that when you put your house on the market, it's going to be ready to go. It's going to show so well and it's going to be top of the line where all these other houses may not be. So just small things that you guys probably already know that you're doing this, but especially now is to help these homeowners prepare for inevitably what's going to be a a massive flow of homes on the market and what they can do to be different and unique at this moment in time. Hey Marcus, I just wanted to share what I had happen yesterday. Um, I had two closings scheduled and the problem is, is that, well, I'm in Michigan. So every 24 minutes it's changing on who can do what. Um, realtors have now been you know, deemed, we're not allowed to show anything. Um, our inspectors are not allowed to inspect. Our well and septic are not allowed to do that, but our closers can still close. So we have people that are actually trying to close on properties that are not gonna be able to have all of these other benefits. And I'm, I have a lot of very stressed out people. So yesterday, my two closings, getting ready to go, and I get an email from the closing company that says, you can't be here. Only the signer can be here. The lender can't be here. Have your client come in the front door, put their license, license side up on the counter and go to the room that's directed with their name, pick up the phone, call the number. We will tell them what documents to sign. Then we will come look through the window to see which ones they're notarized that need to be notarized. And then they can leave their check and leave the building. And my people were very stressed out. They've never closed on anything. And I wasn't, I, there was nothing I could do to be there with them other than really support them and encourage them and reassure them and follow up with them. And I think that's going to be a huge thing for all of us is that as this is changing every day and a lot of it's uncharted territory for new clients. So it's not 
it's not even just about the people that we're trying to get business from. We need to take care of the ones that we have too, because this is nothing that any of us have experienced and we can't, we can't sound panicky. I mean, I felt, I, I wanted to throw up all afternoon. Like I just, I, I couldn't believe I couldn't be there with them. And what if something came up? What if they had a question? So I think really good communication is going to be huge. And like everybody's saying, if you're the one that's out there in front, because there's tons of realtors that will not put their face on a video, you will, you'll get it. You'll get the business. And our market's not slowing down. Um, we had people in a frenzy on Monday out doing video tours, everything they could, but nobody can go in the house for here three weeks. We're on a band for three weeks. Nobody can do anything, but they still expect us to close. Well, yeah. even on that, I mean, the, the thing I think is really important to understand is that you've come up with a solution as has your, your the, the conveyance office, if you will. Everybody's kind of figuring out how they can work in these times and keep you know offering a service and i think the best thing we can do is make sure that our current clients and and everybody have our cell phone numbers mm -hmm. right i i'd love to be able to essentially be there holding your hand through all this as i usually am with all my clients however i'm not allowed to it's not i i'm not here for you or i can't be here for you it's i'm here for you in every capacity i have the ability to be Right. So even, you know, if you're if you're concerned, if you're nervous, whatever it is, have me on speakerphone, right? As you're signing these papers, if you're not sure of something, I want to make sure what you're signing typically. I want to be there and make sure you're signing the right things. Right. right? So our FaceTime. Hundred percent. There you go, Wendy. Exactly. FaceTime, right? So let let me be there in any capacity that I'm able to be there for you. And if you have questions, if you have concerns, we, we wait until tomorrow if we need to, whatever, but make sure you're doing the right thing. I'm here, I'm available, here's my number, here's all my information. Um, but it's, it's working within what we have available and right. making sure, and, and, and same thing, this isn't um, something that we've all been through a hundred times before, right? When it comes to closings, most of us have been to that table many, many, many times and know exactly what to expect and the curveballs that may happen and how to deal with that. Great, however, we're in a new time. The, nobody's no matter how long you've been in real estate, this is probably the first time you've dealt with something quite like this. So our clients, being that a lot of them, this is their first time buying or selling, think of how you know, stressed they must be. So once again, and I think you handled it the right way, is our job now is to make sure we can be you know, holding the puke back, we can be nervous as all heck, it's fine. Right. right. We have to present, we have to present to them control and calm and all of that. And, and I think that's what everybody is saying. It's like, you know, let's be the professionals. Let's be the one that, that we're, you know, we're putting out there that, Hey, this is crazy. We all know it, but we're going to get through it. I have one house that I have now. Um, I'm on my ninth offer and it's bombed, come back, bombed, come back. And it's all because of the virus and everybody's just working together. I don't know about any of the other locations, but we actually have a, an addendum that was provided by the Michigan Realtors that says everybody can get out of any of it after 30 days if this virus continues. No questions asked. You get everything back, no questions asked. And everybody is attaching that to every offer. So it's almost like one, one if you're three deep in it, and that first one decides to bail, everybody else is going to be out of luck. It's, it's pretty intense. It's called, a, it's called a force majeure is what they call that. Okay. Right, so, <laughs> you so would here's know. My, here's what I was going to say for you, Deanna. Um, I never go to closings unless, now I've actually had to go sign for a couple people because they were overseas from a military base. Um, most questions that come out of escrow are always going to be the lender questions. But why, don't you don't, why, why do you not go to closing? Um, because I'm not allowed to answer some of the, the questions that come up are never for me. They're always for the lender. So what I do is I make sure my lenders are available. Now, if they have a question, they'll call me and I usually wind up steering them to the lender. So, hmm. you know, I mean, I mean, you know, and you think of this for us at a certain point, Jack about trades master at none. So like my recommendation to anybody going into escrow right now, and I would give you the funnier story. This is the quarantine for real, but um, FaceTime, with their lender or they can turn around and, and y'all you know, either just a good old phone call on speaker. But a lot of times I'd rather they do video if they got something, they show it and the lender can do it. Cause most times people want to know like, Oh my God, my rate's supposed to be 3.1. This says 3.65 why? And it's the APR versus the interest rate. So the only questions they have for me is when can I get keys I signed? But I mean, all the way up to escrow, I'm not invisible. I answer my phone. 
but for the client that's going in there, they need usually the questions they ask, they just need to be able to get a hold of the people the questions are for. And like I say, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's a lender question. And we can't answer that question for them as far as what's there, because when you get into the privacy information part of this, we don't know, you know, hey, the lender says 3,000 closing costs, this, that, we got that. But the personal information is still what the lender has. So I let the lender deal with that part. I have a deal closing Monday and the lady is in an assisted living community. I, I represent the buyer and I asked the, the, the listing agent, why did you not have the daughter get a specific power of attorney? So the mother is allowed one visitor a day. And I'm sitting here and, and I, you know, you don't step on toes, but I'm here to work with people. And I was kind of laughing because I've kind of helped her through this whole deal. And she's been in the business for about 10 years. So I'm amazed where she's at. And it's, you know, it's always a reminder. I say, when you're dealing with people, deal with them with the thought they're at the bottom line of the technology level or whatever until you find where they're at. So after I let these guys kind of fumble and stumble a minute, I was like, okay, you know what, guys, this is crazy. Because where I kind of drew the line is they were trying to get the mom scheduled to go, well, we need to know when she can go to escrow and this and that. And all the escrows are closing. And they go, yeah, we're going to get her. We're going to take her. She's going to go down there. And then she's already, I mean, you guys have seen the news about Seattle and all the, the you know, nursing homes and stuff like that. This stuff is real. So for her already being in isolation, she comes out to sign. And when she goes back, she had to go in quarantine for 14 days in house when she's already in insulation i'm like this is ridiculous so i'm like you know we say think outside the bubble i live outside the bubble i go do you guys have an in-house notary they're like well yeah i said okay here's what we're gonna do i said i want you guys to get the paperwork because the seller doesn't have much to sign anyway they're gonna sign release deed of trust i already had the mandatory clause and all that in the contract i said just get the paperwork to them email it let them to the person there let them print it up um, let the notary go ahead and sign it. Thing, seal it in a plastic bag, set it outside the door, take it, and just run with it. And everybody's looking at me like, oh, wow, we never thought of that. And sometimes, you know, people want to act like they're the most calmest in the world, but inside they're just all twisted up. So never think that the person you're working with is going to be as calm or on the level as you. I, I've learned um, the, the macho thing with men is we turn around, we're never going to let no one be more manly than us. And sometimes you just have to talk them off the cliff in a calm way so that they're with you or steer them around. And everyone to make it a head button contest. We're in this together. So um, I've had to turn around and basically take the listing agent's hand and steer them around to where we can do this. And so they're signing the seller today, to say the way I'd suggested it at this sister living community. And we'll move forward to Monday to close, but it's the same thing. I've already got it set up where if they have questions for the lender, they're just going to go ahead and FaceTime with them and talk about it. And if they have any questions, they'll get it done. But it, it's like, never assume anything right now in this business, ask the question. And if you're not sure, hold that other person's hand and take them to the next level. Because the bottom line is, I don't want to see anybody fail in a case like that if they fail. Because if the deal doesn't close, run it. And you remember that. So I definitely would say, just make sure that whatever it is coming up, your clients know going in there, whoever they need to call. And if they want to call you, that's fine. You answer your phone, it's good to go. But um, think, you know, not only of you, but think of the lender. Because like I said, 99.9% .9 of the time, the questions I have are always for the lender docs. And we're not the ones responsible for that. We don't know what's in them. We don't see the binder. Or if it's an insurance question, you know. So you're, you're the resource. You're the jack of all trades, master at none. It runs through you. But I don't need to tie up the phone when they need to be on the phone having the conversation with someone else. And, and I just say, keep that in mind. And then Ira, just, the, go ahead. I've, I've done this. I'm sorry, I've been doing it 19 years and I've never not been at the table. So that just blows my mind <laughs> that, what, that you don't what, go to the table. <laughs> what do you have that you need to be there for is my question. And I ask you this, think about this. You are exposing yourself as well to somebody. What, what is it that a realtor has at the table other than holding the hand? Are you talking about right now as far as virus? When, or are you when your people sign. Uh, it's, it's just a, a finalization of the relationship and the best wishes part and stuff like that. I get, I get what you're saying. I just don't understand not being there to, um, to, to be their cheerleader. You've been their cheerleader for six, seven, eight weeks. Why, why not be there on the, the day that all kind of comes together? So that's all. It's just, I've never heard of people not going to the closing table. That just surprises me, but it's, that's totally your prerogative. Matt, I have a question for you because you commented on the addendum. Are you in Michigan?
Matt. <laughs> well, while he's waiting, then so here's Minnesota. Are you in Michigan, Closer. Minnesota? Yeah, we're in Minnesota. Do you have the same addendum? I'm guessing it's very similar. And you feel strongly against it? Yeah, as I read through it, um, and I can, you know, share it with my coach Ira if he wants to dispense that around. But to anybody who's interested, but. When I look at it, I, I'm reading something that makes it easy for people to bail. And that can just be driven by weird panic things. So right now I have um, buyers who are purchasing a house on April 23rd. <laughs> it's a month away. I never felt like a month was that long before, but uh, do now. And we sold their house in a couple of days. Uh, we reach an agreement after inspection. Um, the appraisal is happening this Saturday. Pretty soon, there are not going to be any more dates involved, right? So our addendum says, if I notify another party that I'm COVID-19 and that makes it hard for me to get a deal done or my closing office is being shut down or we're non-essential, it automatically invokes a specified period where we extend that contract out. But it also has language in there that makes it easy for people to simply cancel. And there is no way, I've got reasonable people on the buy side, I've got reasonable people on the sell side, the agent and I have a good relationship, and we've decided that we're just going to keep, you know, keep everybody close to the table and keep talking about what makes for common sense. Because nobody, you know, nobody wants to see somebody run away from this deal based on the news of the moment. Yeah, and, and keep in mind, everybody's dealing with this a little bit differently and everybody has their own internal dialogue and, and the way that they want to, to handle everything, of course. Um, you know, documents like that, obviously, when you offer a little bit more leeway to somebody who may find that that bit of uh, buyer's remorse right they've already signed on the dotted line and now they're looking for ways for anybody who's ever you know sold especially a big ticket item it doesn't matter what it is you know that as soon as that money's been committed there is this little bit of panic in everybody's mind that that's a lot of money and if they have an out i mean obviously but once again we're in a we're we're, we're kind of shooting at a moving target here I mean, nobody has any idea how long this is going to last and what the potential impact is going to be and the ramifications long term. And as things continue to change and adapt, my assumption is these addendums and all these out clauses and everything are going to have to shift and, and shuffle a little bit. So we'll keep an eye on, on kind of what's happening. And, and once again, I think that everybody coming to, you know, these meetings, getting together, especially the fact that you guys are all in, in different states and provinces here in Canada, you're everywhere, you have the slightly different insight to how you how you go about your business and being able to come here and share with one another that's really kind of what we're hoping to continue to see happen um so i think that's 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 huge now one thing i had before we wrap up here that i really wanted to ask everybody was does everybody here have the ability to connect virtually with your clients does everybody have something like zoom or google hangouts are you guys all by show of hands who's employing a virtual solution Seen quite a few. Okay, good. Um, now, one thing that we're going to be coming up with, hopefully, um, if not by the, the end of this week, next week, we're going to try to come up with a video walkthrough that gives a few ideas as to how to set up using Calendly, how to connect it to Zoom, different things to kind of help those that aren't already comfortable and familiar with it. And then um, we've come up with a couple of ad ideas. And, and I think that once again, um, what we're really going to ask of the group is, for anybody who has ad copy that's not, once again, going down that fear mongering language and more, you know, offering a solution that's slightly different. If you guys could start posting in the insider group and um, everybody else kind of give your, your feedback, um, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and share mine and you guys can let me know. Um, this is really, I just came up with a few this morning that, you know, I didn't mind the, the look of. So let me know um, what you think of these ones here. But here's just a couple random ones, I guess. But once again, going more down the, direction of meeting people virtually right so something along these lines and of course you can change the imagery change anything you like but something like this do you have um to sell or do you have uh, a home to sell but not sure if it's the right time uh, book a free consultation and learn about our digital solutions to help you buy or sell in any situation something like that um, this one here have i don't really love you know mentioning the current health concerns so once again these these are just a few options you guys may want to uh, change the, the verbiage but 
you know, have the current health concerns postponed your plans to sell your home this year, find the value of your home and learn about new guidelines to market and sell your home virtually, keeping you and your family safe is our number one priority. More in line with, um, you know, people need to buy and sell real estate in all situations. To find out more about our digital solutions, book a free consultation now. And once again, these can all be set up as, as lead ads. So when somebody clicks on it, you get their information automatically, and then they can choose to book now. And then you link your Calendly um, account to that. So they'll go directly to your calendar, and you can block off whatever times you want and leave the ability for them to book any time and then meet with you through Google Hangouts or Zoom or, or some kind of virtual platform like we're on now. A um, couple more, I played around a little bit here, but this one here, want to know if uh, your home's value has changed, book a free online consultation where I can help not only answer that, but any other real estate questions you may have. And then this last one, I just played around with while we were on this call with what Ira was saying, just kind of joking around a bit, but um, there's nothing like being locked inside to realize it's time for an upgrade. Whether you're looking to sell your home or just want to know its current value, we can help book your free online consultation, right? So playing around with it a little bit, maybe use a funny image, something like that. But um, once again, there's, there's the ability to still offer the kind of connection we're trying to make with people. And once again, understanding that a lot of people won't be ready to sell their home in these times, not a problem. At least we can still meet with them, answer their questions, build that relationship and offer something slightly different than what they're seeing out other places right now. And then, you know, as you know, and, and once again, it's the ability to then keep them updated, right? That's huge. If you want to keep updated with what's happening around us in your market, you know, when a home goes live, I'll be able to send you the information to let you know exactly what's happening around you, whether you're looking at buying or selling, it's nice to know what's happening statistically in our area, right? Now more than ever, people are going to be craving that, that personal connection, right? I mean, there's, there's a lot of people that, I mean, I, I work with a lot of you guys and I, I see a lot of you guys through the, the video, but even the people that we work with in our office, I haven't seen in, quite some time, right? So we're, we're, we're craving that personal connection. So being able to offer even- Oh, you miss us, Logan? I, most of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying though, is, is people are really craving that, that kind of connection with people. And once again, if you are or have been thinking of buying or selling real estate, now in these uncertain times, more than ever, you have questions, right? This is a great opportunity to introduce yourself to them you're their source of, of, of answers, you're their resource, right? You get the, the ability to build that connection now more than ever. So really lean into it, consider the digital options. If anybody has anything above and beyond those things that we've already suggested, Zoom, Google Hangouts, things like that, um, please put it in the insider group and you're gonna get feedback from everybody else. And, and once again, we all win together, right? So um, hey, just your thoughts absolutely. Okay. Can we create a, a, a document or a resource where we can all share at it? ideas and then how obviously we would build them. Um, I know Steve has the ad tweaks class. He's opened up to two or three times. Um, it's basically making it easy. So some people can just kind of go click, 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 launch an ad, test it just like we always do. Three ad split test, boom, see which ones wins. And if we, we find a winning like formula there, then everybody wins, right? Ultimately. And sometimes it's, it's going to be the same ad that we're always using that just keeps on working. And it's more of the reflection of the automation itself. So we still want to, to not get away from the model that we know works. If you're still getting a low CPC and cost per lead, then make it all about the automation shooting out to reflect how you want them to experience this. Right. It's not so much always ad copy that we need to change if it's working or, you know, try some of Logan's suggestions and, and run it side by side, see which one works best. Yeah. I love that. I even had a couple ideas there sparked out of that, Logan. I was thinking of uh, one would be, you know, people probably wondering when's the best time to sell or maybe you've done renovations, you want to get ready for the summer market. These are, these are great copy we could be running and put it on the market. I just want to remind people as well, is there's really like, there's three essential, um, you know, services in life. There's food, there's water, and there's shelter. Shelter is on people's mind right now. Real estate agents, I feel like this is a huge opportunity for real estate agents because it's like everybody needs to know. They want to know what's going on. The good news, I mean, the best news is that if you look at all of the, uh, you know, the economists right now, they're all in agreement that the housing market is in a super strong position right now. And, you know, you, you, you don't really have to look around very far to realize that people are super active. The market is strong. In the 2001, after the 2001-9-11 crisis, the stock market took a bit of a drop. I think it dropped like 40 something percent. The, or 30 something percent. The housing market increased that year, the home values kept going up. So 
It's one thing I want to remind as well, and this is part of like just educate people on the facts of the market and then trust their intelligence. The other thing is remember that there's, you know, there's three parts of, of a, a real estate business, but right now this is a prime opportunity to work on the other two. One is nurture your current clients, talk to your current clients, keep your communication high. Number mm -hmm. two is lead generation. Talk to your leads, keep your communication high. If you're not doing mail newsletters, now's the time to do it. Like email newsletters. If you're not talking to people in a, in a you know, if, if, you're, if you're not putting photos or videos on Facebook, talking about what's going on in your market, now's the time to do it. People want to know. This is, this is an all time of the, the three things they're thinking about right now. They're thinking about their health, they're thinking about their shelter, and they're thinking about their food. So that, these are huge. Like this is a huge opportunity in front of the marketplace. You know, bring the good news, share the good news. I think people need to know that this is a short term crisis and need to be reminded that the end is in sight. You can already see the end of the, the, end of the tunnel. And you know, when June hits and July hits, People are going to be so excited to be outside. There's going to be people who want to upgrade their house. There's going to be people who, you know, they, they, it's, it's, it's that, that shift will happen overnight just as quickly as this shift happened. So it's just uh, being prepared and, and putting yourself in a position where you are going to win. And I know that, you know, the, the agents in this mastermind, the agents in this group, like you guys are, you guys are killing it. You're on top of it. Like you're, you're just by investing your time and being here and all the things that you guys are already doing and how you're thinking about going to the walkthroughs and thinking about, okay, how are we providing these digital solutions? Thinking about, okay, how am I communicating, uh, you know, even, you know, someone going through closing, how can I get ahead of that? These are huge. And that's going to put people at, at, at ease. And the last thing I was going to make around Matt's comment there in regards to when people feel trapped, they get scared by giving them a one month period of time and get out of jail free card, so to speak it puts people at ease and then they make much more rational decisions. So the fear is, Oh, well, now we've given them this one month, get our jail free card. They're going to be irrational. But in reality, what it does is it allows their brain to sort of say, oh, okay, this is good. This is good. I can make this decision. It's risk-free and I can keep moving forward. And the market needs that. And then come summer, they'll be looking back and uh, you know, autumn fall next year, they're going to be saying, yeah, that was a really good decision. I'm glad I made that decision. So it's, yeah, just, just wanted to, to share those, those thoughts there. What well, are the yeah, real quick on that, I think, and Leon, I'm sure you've been dying to say something, so <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be brief. But once again, you know, given, given these times, it's our job to kind of do what, what's, what's happening around us and, and as professionals, be able to put our, our clients' minds at ease. So if there is an out clause, okay, great, we know that that's, that's available. Let's make sure that we're in constant communication with that individual to make sure that their panic doesn't set in. Right? Is there something that you're that's going to want you to enact that clause? Great. Let me definitely let let me kind of take that and throw it away in a sense. Right? Help you put your mind at ease so that you don't wish to enact that clause. Um, but yeah, like kind of what John's saying, I, I do agree. It's if somebody is considering whether or not to you know invest those funds or kind of you know sign on the dotted line, and they're like, I'm uncertain as to what's happening. And we do have, in a sense, a tool to be able to say, look, there is a, a, an out automatically built into this. Should this progress much beyond where it is? Um, once again, obviously, I, I do also agree with you, Matt, in that um, any ability for a client to, um, you know, avoid a contract when, especially during escrow, is, is certainly um, a scary thought because we put a lot of time and energy and effort into that. And we want to make sure that, especially if we've already helped somebody sell their property, now they're trying to buy another property. We're in a very interesting situation, of course. That sounds more like kind of where, where you were with your situation right now. Um, so obviously, we all... We all understand, obviously, and once again, I can't uh, you know, say enough. Everybody has their own mentality and their way of doing things, and um, it's just our job, once again, to be that professional and, and help our clients through any situation. So, Leon, what do you so have to say? Is, you know, we say to inject some humor in this. Seeing how the people are stuck home and can't go nowhere anyway, um, and changing up something, what I'm doing is I'm sending the this text to them, whatever, ask them what time the virtual tour is today, their home. Let them show you the home. They can do the walkthrough. People like doing things. They want to show their property. It gets their mind off that. So when they give you the tour of their home, once again, you have engagement. And, and like, if you're going to do it where you're doing it off your computer or whatever, if you need to record it, rec screen record it. You've got Zoom. It's free. You can record that or use whatever. And that lets you pick your notes for their home. But they're there. They're not going anywhere. I guess this is the best time in the world you're going to catch them at home. So catch them at home and let them just tour and open up and as they get personal with you, I got a couple that just had a kid and they're already talking about how it's changed their life and this and that. And so 
I ask, you know, I always start out with how's, you know, how's the baby and, you know, go with there. So now that they're home, you can get that tour. If you couldn't schedule a walk through before, you can get one now. Go ahead and ask. Make it funny. I'm going to go look for a picture of a chicken coop that's kind of funny and say, hey, now that we're all cooped up at home, uh, be the perfect time for you to give me the virtual tour of the home. What time are we doing this today? And I'm going to send them an invite to do this. But it, it's, it is a, a way to reach out now that, like I said, they're home. So get your tour. And my thing for Ira, there's a meme I'm going to find for you. It's a famous, you have two options, A or B. A is stay home with the wife and kids and B, and they don't even get it out of their mouth, and the guy's going, yeah. B. <laughs> that was tears. Yeah. Just, uh, just a couple thoughts, too. I got my kids in the background yelling if you hear them. But uh, I am no economist by any means. <clears throat> but this is an external event. When it changes, we have an unbelievable amount of stimulus in the economy right now, right? We could see especially since the housing market itself isn't in jeopardy because it's an external event, we're still short in our housing. We could see a bit of a boom at the end of all this too. So for all of you that it's like going into like a, a corner in a race car, right? It's like slowing the hitting the brakes a little bit, but make sure you're braking late. And when you come out on this, make sure you're putting your gas on. So that's why we have, as a company, we have not even dropped $1 in our own ad spend like this. This is wild and this is crazy. And this is just some final thoughts. And again, I'm no economist, but I would say, you know, in the dark, in the, you know, when it's dark and it's kind of scary, that's when Warren Buffett always talks about that. He makes some of his best decisions, right? So just look ahead. You know, we will get through this. When we get through this, I, I think that there's going to be, it's actually going to be an interesting time. And I think all of you guys are really well situated uh, to do really, really well. So that's just kind of my thoughts. Awesome. Has anybody used a Zoom for a video testimonial from your client? And did it work out or what questions did you ask or is that a dumb idea? There's no dumb ideas. Elaborate maybe a little bit more though. Like you, you mean like um, doing like a, a Zoom call with somebody and recording them saying some nice things about you? Yeah, you like so both of you would be on it. Like I think that's a, Zoom, a great idea. A Zoom conference. That. Yeah. But like, what questions would you ask? Because basically, is um, a video testimonial is them saying how amazing you are. Well, you don't really want to say, "So, oh, how amazing was I?" <laughs> but you know, you could say what what was most fun about this process? What did you enjoy most about how how we worked together? Um, what, you know, what do you love most about your new home? Uh, was it? Did you feel like you found something that you otherwise never would have found? Uh, you make it about the the current times. You know, like um, given what's happening around us. How did you find the, you know, the virtual walkthrough? How did like some of the, the extra features that you're offering now in these times, get them to explain in their words, how that put their minds at ease. I think that's kind of, that might be the better. Yeah, you, you're going to be surprised. You're going to be surprised. There's going to, they're going to say things that you probably didn't even consider. Uh, everybody should be doing this right now. That's a great <laughs> idea. Um, allow a video reply. I thought of that too, um, just, you know, asking for a video testimony and just saying, just reply back through video about, you know, how are, I mean, cause I haven't really closed anything. I mean, I've closed everything that started way before this mess. <laughs> so, but we haven't gotten anything into escrow since the mess started. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Wendy. Um, a lot of people do not like going to Zillow and having to fill out their whole life bio to go ahead and reply to people. So on my new site that I have, I've got something when it closes, it has an automated thing. You hit the button, it'll ask for a testimonial. You're not looking to have a, a novel that you post. Usually you just want them first few lines or whatever. So right. I would suggest taking bomb bomb, sending out a bomb bomb vid, asking those guys, Hey, do me a favor, hit reply. And just real quick, tell me what's your thought. Da 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 da. And when they reply back to it, take the juicy meat matters of it, put their name, hey, John and Wendy, and post it in there for the testimonial, and you can still have the rest there. And you can also post the videos, too. Yeah, cool. Hi. Just always thinking this Zoom thing is just insane. Like, uh, we, I went on with my lender and my clients because I have their home up for sale. They went into escrow on a new build. They have a 30-day loan contingency, and we were kind of trying to you know, get the home in escrow and close before the home's done being built. But we qualified them as 5% down. 
Um, so there's a worst case scenario. So I'm like, okay, well, we need to get on a Zoom video and I'll meet. And it actually went really cool. I mean, just having the lender on it too. And, you know, the husband and wife and everybody's all on the same page. So it's good. You guys, this, this is the perfect time to set aside time to create process, to focus on using new technologies, to think about the autoresponder and how you'd like it to connect to that person, to go for the relationship on Facebook. Check out the video that we did last week with Tristan to show how to leverage Facebook as a CRM. Because the idea is now connection more than ever. Everybody wants connection. So they're more, being more intentional about actually creating the connection on Facebook will be massive of putting them in the list. And then having Messenger as a tool where you can check in and have fun with the filters. There's so much fun with those filters. Like people need that type of fun and it's an experience. So more than ever, I would go for the connection on Facebook. I would friend request everybody. I'd drop them into lists. I'd send them a message on Facebook. I would open up BombBomb and Zoom and all these different ways that are separating you from everybody else that's crawling up in their shell and hiding. You're the influencers, you're the leaders. Guard your thoughts and hearts more than ever at this time and just focus on what is good and noteworthy and pure. That's the key right now just focusing on what you can and truth right and so that's that's where you guys come in and i think you can inspire a lot of people and encourage them and lead them in this place and marcus i think you made a really good point that right now more than ever it proves that we need to make those personal connections so i think i think that that that's an excellent point Awesome. Yeah, just continue to serve your clients. Uh, that's, that's always, that's always going to be the most important thing, even when business is, is slow and, and maybe things are, are you know, I, I hate to say it, but you know, even when things are at their worst, you be at your best, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of the same thing as Deanna was saying is, is even when we're feeling our, our emotions, it's our job to put up a strong face and, and, and be that, that, that source of strength, right? So um, our, our buyers or sellers, they may panic. That's fine. We can't, right? We have to be, we have to be a valuable resource and just be there for people in, in, the, in, in any time, right? And then once again, that'll just serve you well into the future. You're, you're adding to your brand right now. If you're the agent that's retracting and, and running and hiding right now during these times, well, who are you going to be to them in the future, right? Be, be available, be present, be personable, be helpful. And even if, if the, in a sense, the paychecks aren't coming in right now, it's, 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 we're going to hit a boom, whether it's next quarter or, or who knows, but it's going to come back and you want to be positioned properly that you've made enough end roads with people that they're reaching out to you, you know, because you were there for them in, in, in their time of stress or whatever it might be. So that's awesome. And, and use the community, the insider group to share what's on your heart. Use it to practice the videos that you maybe want some people to actually give you some feedback on or just get in there and post a video of anything that comes to mind that you'd love some feedback on. Cause there's 1500 people in there all probably thinking the same thing, wanting some feedback. So I would say now is the time to actually get outside that box and throw the video in there and ask for some feedback instead of just posting the regular, you know, text based response in there to try to get feedback, throw a video in, ask, ask for some feedback so everybody can feel, you, your body language and your tonality, because that's ultimately what your leads are going to experience. That's what your clients are going to experience. And if you need that practice, we're all held here to help each other for this. Awesome. It's awesome. Thanks, guys. I, I got to head out here too, but. Um, well, we, yeah. It's been awesome. We're, we're, down, we're down to 22. So we'll let everybody go at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good it was a good hangout session so this will be recorded in the in the in the group and um you guys more than ever if you want to create more of these situations we can open up more meetings right we're always here for you especially now so um just post what you'd like us to 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 help you with in the insider group and then we'll be on it all right have a great day thanks for attending <laughs>